morning. Um, many of you moms and dads have already figured out that we are having in-person Sunday school. If everyone else can do me a favor. So to help us keep and maintain social distancing protocols at our church, we're asking that this first floor hallway right here of the Wallace building where the nursery is, where all those Sunday school classrooms are, it's easy to walk through right there to get to the other building. I get it. But we're asking that that hallway not be used as a pass through. If you need to go to your car in the back parking lot, you can walk out this door and walk in through the atrium and walk around that way. You can also walk out the 9th Street door and just walk down the street. It's beautiful outside. Um, but that hallway has a tendency of becoming a place of traffic congestion where we all really do want to visit with each other. And I, I do encourage you to visit with each other outside. Um, so if everybody can help me out with that, that would be awesome. One parent may use that hallway to go pick up from Sunday school, but then they need to return back this way again, just so we're not creating traffic congestion. We are also having in-person youth group this evening from 6.30 to 7.30 for our middle and high school students. Middle school students can enter right through this fellowship hall door and have an awesome dinner and program here in the fellowship hall. High school students can enter through the atrium door, walk up the stairway, and head up to the loft for an awesome dinner and program up there for them too. Dinner tonight is subs from Harris Teeter. It's going to be awesome, and we hope all of you come out for a time of learning and fellowshipping together. Friends, this morning as we enter into worship, let's prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word by singing together. Let's stand and worship, guys.
Yes, we stand in you. We stand for you. We stand as your only deed. Yes, we live in you. We live for you. We live to you, our King. Yeah, we stand in you. Good morning. Our first scripture lesson this day comes from the book of Philippians, starting in the third chapter. But whatever I was to my prophet, now I consider a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the compassing greatness of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all of this, or have I already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now as a people of faith, we join those who have gone before us and those in churches this day as we share in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. May we stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer. One of the greatest privileges of being a church is being able to share our joys and our concerns with each other. Um, a great joy for all of us this week is that we had another amazing week of Kingswood, our virtual learning school for kids in K through fifth grade. I see a lot of my volunteers out here, and I, I just give God thanks and praise for the many hands that have come together to do amazing work. What other prayers do you have to bring before us this morning? Mallory. 
Mallory, we're praying for your mom as she goes to that doctor's appointment. Thanks for sharing that with us. Are there others? Waylon, what do we have from online? We just have Miss Jolene Walker's aunt, Evelyn, is in the hospital in Goldsboro right now. Miss mm, Jolene, we are praying for you. Waylon, we get Patrick the mic because I know there are some that he knows about. We had three deaths within the church this week. Bill Glover died yesterday, so prayers for his wife, Louise, and family. Yesterday, we had the service for Kenny Wade, Earl and Doris Wade, that are a part of this service, their son, and and then um, Ruby Morgan, and so for Terry and her family in the death, and that funeral was Friday in Fayetteville. Mm. We have several in facilities here in the area Uh, that have really declined this past week. Just the depression and not seeing families and the struggles and difficulties. We also have some of our uh, homebound people um, that have been declining. And so truly keep those. They don't necessarily want to be mentioned by by name, but we have three in particular that have really just declined this past week. Thanks for lifting that up to us, Patrick. Is there anything else that y'all would bring before this gathered body and God? Let's go together before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, you know our hearts and you know our needs. We don't have to speak aloud the burdens that we carry because you see it all, Lord, and you are always present with us and always working in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. God, you have heard the names that we have lifted before you for families who are grieving, for families who are fighting cancer, for those loved ones who are in these facilities who feel like they are fighting alone. Continue to give them strength, God. You give us all your armor, and it's our choice to put it on. Lord, help us this morning as we sing these songs and hear your word to focus and reorient our heart to you. Let's confess our sins this morning, God, and help us to leave them all here so that we might go out from here and be your hands and your feet and put our prayer concerns into actions. Lord, we ask all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Kids who are worshiping with us this morning, we invite you to stay in your seats. Uh, We just can't quite have everybody come up here just yet. Kids who are worshiping at home, come super close to the screen, to the TV, to the phone, to the tablet. Pastor Patrick has an awesome children's moment for all of you this morning. Let me share one more prayer request. Lauren Wells, that's always in this worship service, her father's in very critical condition uh, at Biden Hospital in Kenansville. This was a very rapid situation, so please keep that family within your prayers. For all the children, both sitting in their chairs and those at home, what does this look like? Now, my kids played t-ball this summer. And I know some of you have played t-ball and other things. And in baseball, it kind of looks like a catcher's vest, doesn't it? Oh, and what does that do if you're playing baseball? Well, it's to protect us if balls come and hit us. If maybe the batter tips a ball and hits us. But Pastor Sarah's preaching this day on the righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. And what is that? It's something that guards our heart. Oh, how much Jesus loves us each and every day. But we sin each day. There's difficulties with friends and other situations. So there's many things that take our eyes off of Jesus. 
And so this breastplate of righteousness is to protect our heart that we might always be focused in on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we might love Jesus just like our mommies and daddies love Jesus, that we might love Jesus as we come to church and Sunday school and all those activities. So this is protection for us that we might love Jesus even more as we read and study our Bibles and live life to the fullest each and every day. So kids, the breastplate of righteousness. Listen to Pastor Sarah. She preaches today, and she talks more about this. All right? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, it's the offering. We usually pass the plates, but as you know by now, there's four different ways that you can give. Mailing your money in. You can do it on the app. You can do it online. Um, you can leave it in the baskets here this day. But Jesus Christ is Lord, and we certainly appreciate you continuing to give your tithes and offerings during the special time that we can reach out in so many different ways to this community. Amen. And now we have the music to worship and praise God. Thank you, guys. Hold me now in the hands that created the heavens. Find me now Where the grace runs as deep as your scars You pulled me from the clay Set me on a rock Called me by your name you Made my heart whole again Let's rise and sing this more Lifted up and my knees know it's all for your glory that I might stand with more reasons to sing than to fear you pulled me from the clay set me
Here I stand, I am surrendered I need you now And hold my heart now and forever My soul, it cries out Here I stand, I am surrendered I need you for we've got to give him our whole heart Lord build our life sing it with us this morning worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe live for you say his name this morning Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever we live for you, oh Lord, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me. With your heart and me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you, Lord, we lift your name, Jesus, the name above every other name, Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, oh Lord, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fear. Your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like. 
Lord, I built my life upon you. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you. And will you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, you are here. You bring us together even when we are far apart. Silence all the thoughts and voices in our hearts and in our heads that don't come from your Holy Spirit, Lord. Speak through me or speak in spite of me. Speak, Lord, because we are your children and we are listening. Amen. Friends, hear this passage again this week from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, 
Words may be fearlessly given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you've been hanging out with us for a while here at First United Methodist Church, you know that each fall we preach through a sermon series intended to highlight the core values of who we are in our Christian faith. Truth, righteousness, peace, salvation, the word, the spirit, all of these pieces of armor make up the core values we should hold as a people of faith. And the good news is we are all equipped with the armor of God. We just have to choose to put it on and then stand firm against the attacks of the evil one. Even though we experience moments of peace, the peace that comes from the presence of God, even now in the midst of this world, we still live in a world that's at war, an often invisible war between God and the evil one. God already secured victory in Jesus on the cross, but until he comes back in final triumph, we find ourselves living in a world between two gardens, the peace in the garden of good and evil and the peace that will come in new creation. You know, I think that was easier for Paul to recognize than it is for us. The spiritual world was so very real to those living in the ancient world. And for us today, Christianity is maybe a little bit easy to practice. We've grown comfortable, and that's right where the enemy wants us lulled to spiritual sleep as we gobble up partial truths and sip our coffee from the sidelines while there's a battle going on within us and around us. See, Paul, he suffered for his faith in ways that are really difficult for us to imagine. He called himself an ambassador in chains. When he wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he was writing from prison, being guarded by Roman soldiers dressed in their Roman army. He had been beaten, starved, forced to live a life in captivity, only getting food and water when his brothers and sisters in Christ would bring it to him. I imagine it would have been easy for him to see his captors as his enemy, but he never lost sight of his true adversary. See, Paul witnessed to his Roman guards instead of fighting against them. And he was inspired by their armor when he penned this letter back to his church in Ephesus. We talked about it last week, the belt of truth, the first piece of armor that a Roman soldier would have put on to get ready for battle. And if you didn't hear Powell's sermon last week, you can always go back and listen. Kim McCurry is amazing. We're podcasting our sermons now. How cool is that? You can download it and listen to it in your car or while you run. You can always go back and watch it on our website and this week, we come to the second piece, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate was one of the heaviest pieces of armor. There's this great story in the Old Testament about the shepherd boy David fighting against the giant in Saul's war against the Philistines. And King Saul, he tries to outfit David in his armor, but David finds himself unable to move under the weight of the breastplate. And David chooses to take off Saul's armor and put on 
the armor of God instead. And he goes into this battle against this giant armed with his faith. And he comes out victorious. See, our giants, they aren't always visible. And our enemy is often unseen. But rest assured, his attacks are calculated. In the very beginning of the passage that I read, Paul says, our struggle isn't against flesh and blood. The word he uses there for struggle in Greek, pale, is a word that defines hand-to-hand combat, a wrestling match, not a cold war or a war that's fought with drones with people who are far away, but a war that is up close and personal. Our enemy attacks us when we are most vulnerable. You know, those temptations that come in the moments that we are the weakest. Those are his calculated attacks. See, our enemy knows he can't destroy us, but he can distract us and divide us and discourage us and therefore disable us if we don't put on the breastplate of righteousness to guard our hearts against his attacks. Y'all imagine for a moment the importance of a breastplate and how vulnerable a soldier would have felt going into battle without one. You can have a belt and a sword and a shield and a helmet, but without a breastplate, you would be completely open to a full frontal attack on all of your most vital organs, your lungs, your liver, your guts, but most importantly, your heart. And and there were two types of breastplates worn commonly by Roman soldiers, the chain link kind made by linking rings of metal together, And then the heavier, stronger kind made by joining bands of curved metal with straps of leather. Both were effective, but for quite some time, the Roman army didn't issue its soldiers standardized armor. So those who came from rich homes could afford better gear And those who were poor would often go into battle underprotected, hoping for the best. But see, that's not so for us. Our breastplate, our protection for our heart is the righteousness of Christ, and we don't have to supply it for ourselves, which is great news because we could not afford it. Unlike the soldiers who had to go into battle without the proper armor, we don't have to rely on our own righteousness because we simply can't win the battle for our heart against our enemy with our own strength. We aren't strong enough to resist the calls of the evil one without the power and protection and strength that comes with the breastplate of Christ's righteousness. His righteousness isn't something that I can earn, and that's good news. Because as much as I hate to admit it, I am not perfect. In fact, even sometimes our pursuits of perfection can become for us an addiction if we aren't constantly checking the motivations of our heart. Proverbs, it says, above all else, guard your heart, for the heart is the wellspring of life. But there's a battle going on inside us and around us, and it's so hard to guard our hearts when the enemy is prowling like a roaring lion, tempting our hearts away from loving God and loving others from loving the right things in the right order. But the good news is that we have this breastplate of righteousness. We can all stand strong because we go into battle protected by a righteousness that does not come from ourselves, but is given to us 
because of Jesus' death on the cross on our behalf. In biblical Greek and Hebrew, the root word righteous, that word also means justice. In the Old Testament world, righteousness was a legal term. You were righteous in the eyes of the law when you were living in right relationship with others and when you were found innocent of the crimes you had supposedly committed. It was also a covenantal word used to describe God's relationship with his people, how God would act to his people, and how his people were to act in response to him. We try to use righteousness as a synonym for virtuousness, but it it doesn't really fit. Instead, it's a word that describes our relationship with God that we access through Jesus. Jesus paid the price for us forever so that we can be righteous before God. Righteousness means that we can be in right relationship with God, and all we have to do to access that righteousness is confess our sins. And even though we are guilty, we did the crime, we are declared innocent. So in response to all this, right, how do we put on this breastplate of righteousness, and how do we wear it daily? so that we can stand firm in our faith, loving the right things in the right order. I think Paul laid it out for us in our first reading from the book of Philippians. I'll hit some highlights again for you in case you missed it. Paul says, I consider everything else a loss, except the righteousness that I have through faith. I want to know Christ I want to participate in his suffering and resurrection. I haven't arrived at my goal, but I press on, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Y'all, we have to put Jesus at the center of our hearts knowing that his righteousness that comes through faith is not something we can earn by our right actions, only by being in right relationship with him. It's not good enough just to be good people, made righteous by making good choices. See, in fact, the truth is there's only one really good choice, and that's to choose Jesus not just once, but over and over again every day, accessing his righteousness through our confession every single day, continuing to live more like him, to love him more, to love more like him each day as we're on this journey together of sanctification powered by the growth of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And the closer we get to the heart of Jesus, the more we should act in ways that are consistent with who we are in Christ. Because he declared us righteous, we're called to live lives that are consistent with that righteousness. Forgetting the mistakes that we made in the past, but pressing on toward the goal like Paul says, the goal that he calls us to, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, we're called to be warriors who fight fiercely on our knees in prayer. And at this very same time, love fiercely as the hands and feet of Jesus. We're called to fight the right enemy. We have to remember, like Paul, that the true battles are the ones that are unseen. And our real problem is not the trials and tribulations that we face, but the enemy that wants to strike at our hearts. And we leave our hearts vulnerable when we have sin that we haven't confessed 
You know, I think sometimes it's all too easy for us to believe that our sin doesn't matter since Christ died for us after all. But the truth is we leave our hearts open to attack when we have these unconfessed sins. We don't like to talk about sin. It's hard. We want to avoid the topic. We want to just shove our sins in the closet and close the door instead of taking out the trash. But we can't have a right understanding of righteousness without taking sin seriously because God takes sin seriously. See, we maintain our position of righteousness through our act of confession. I think sometimes, even for me in my own prayer life, I underestimate the power of confession. And I spend so much time asking God for protection and provision for me, for others. But maybe it's confession that really is the key to abundant living. Because it's confession that frees us and allows us to live out our position of righteousness before God by living a life that is right and just and holy. Y'all, Bradley, he lied to me this week about something silly, but I caught him in his lie, and we talked about it at bedtime, and we talked about how lying is a sin, and his sin hurt me, but it also hurt God. And he apologized to me, and he gave me a hug because he's super sweet, and he said he was sorry. And then he prayed, Dear God, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wish I could give you a hug. I know one day I will give you a hug for this moment. Amen. Y'all, it's that simple. That's the prayer that gives us access to the breastplate of righteousness, this priceless weapon of defense that Jesus bought on our behalf so that we can stand strong in our faith. Y'all, protect your hearts this week. Love God. Love others. Love the right things in the right order. Give hugs and give apologies. Let's confess our sin so that we stay in perfect fellowship with the one who is strong enough to win every battle. Let's put on the light and fast and swift armor of God and put off the heavy armor of this world that that weighs us down. And since we are counted as righteous by our faith, let's live out that righteousness in our actions. And y'all, this week, let's remember, the good news is that Jesus already won victory on our behalf. So no matter what mistakes we make, we can always confess and give him a hug and be embraced with his forgiveness. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? Gracious God, we do confess the sins that we have brought with us. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We failed to be an obedient church. We have broken your will. We have not done your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, God, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, there is good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. So let's stand and sing our closing song together. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I from the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow of my life, the ransom for my life, oh, is my song. You are good, good. 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 Let 
the king of my heart Be the wind inside my sails The anchor in the waves For oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the fire inside my veins The echo of my days For oh, he is my song Cause you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, sing you are good. Good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good. to hold on to us even when we aren't strong enough to hold on to him. May the love of God the Father, the grace of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day. Amen. You are good, good. Good, good, oh, you are good, good, good. Oh. 